<sighs> you won't succeed without trying. But never try taking drugs. There are always wonderful surprises in life, but drugs will only cause regret. The hottest local news, trending international stories, weekly review, topics that affect our communities, in-depth analyses and opinions. All that you need is in one place. Weekly review, Sunday night at 9 on VIEW TV 6. This is VIEW TV News, I'm Diane To, coming up on tonight's show. Moon Jae-in secures South Korea's presidency in a win ending months of political turmoil. Indonesian court jails Christian governor for blasphemy against Islam in controversial trial seen as the latest test of religious tolerance. And hospital admits to medical blunder involving a mother whose liver transplant woes caught public attention. We begin in South Korea tonight, where exit polls show liberal politician Moon Jae-in won the country's presidential election in a victory ending nearly a decade of conservative rule. Earlier, the 64-year-old was seen in bright spirits together with his wife as they cast their ballots. The win, which had been widely expected, ends months of political uncertainty following a parliamentary vote to impeach former President Park geun -hye. A strong voter turnout suggested voters were eager to move on from the scandal. And for more on Moon's win, we cross over to Joseph Kim, who's standing by in Seoul with the latest. This has been a historic election in South Korea with the highest number of eligible voters and a 76 participation rate. It all comes following months of protests staged here against the corruption in government, which led to the impeachment of former President Park Geun-hye. Moon ran on a platform of reform against the corruption in business and politics vowing for better transparency and better regulation for corporate governance. And this will be an extremely difficult challenge as South Korea's economy is heavily reliant on family conglomerates like Samsung and Hyundai. Moon has also vowed for job creations with the country struggling with youth unemployment, both in the private and public sector. Lastly, and perhaps his most contentious policy is his stance on engagement with North Korea. Relations with Pyongyang have been hostile since Park Geun-hye's government have cut all bilateral cooperations. But his foreign policy may also affect ties with the United States, having once said before that he believes South Korea should be able to say no to the U.S., including the deployment of Thad. Well, this key leadership election in South Korea comes at a time of heightened tension with its neighbors in the north. In the latest rhetoric out of Pyongyang, it accused a U.S. Central Intelligence Agency and South Korea's intelligence of plotting an attack on its supreme leadership with two biochemical weapons. Footage released by North Korean state media show Pyongyang residents denouncing what the government called state-sponsored terrorism. The accusation comes after the Hermit Nation allegedly detained a fourth U.S. citizen on suspicion of hostile acts against the regime. I feel indignation at the U.S. imperialists and the South Korean puppets. America's dangerous behavior has got to the point where it could launch a biochemical attack against our supreme leadership. How can we bear this? We cannot bear this anymore. We have to wipe out all those villains involved in this recent hideous terrorist plot. News elsewhere now in Jakarta's Christian governor was sentenced to two years in jail for blasphemy against Islam, a harsher than expected ruling in a trial that was seen as a test of religious tolerance in Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim-majority nation. Samantha Vallis reports. 
Two years behind bars for Jakarta's Christian governor. That's the verdict from an Indonesian court on Tuesday in a trial seen as a test for the country's religious tolerance. Bazuki Jahaja Panama, known as Ahok, was accused of insulting the Quran, and for months Islamist groups have been calling for him to be jailed. Many hardliners gathering outside the court on Tuesday as the judge found Ahok guilty of blasphemy against their religion. Two years is very lenient in my opinion compared to the pain and sacrifices made by Muslims, including the nation that was almost wrecked by the crimes of Ahok the blasphemer. Prosecutors had previously called for a suspended one-year jail term, the two-year sentence coming as a shock to many of his supporters who weeped outside the court. The law is blind. It can no longer tell between right and wrong. A hawk has sacrificed being governor, and we accepted that. Now he's innocent, yet accused of blasphemy. We are disappointed with the law in Indonesia. Human rights activists say the guilty verdict is bad news for Indonesian minorities, saying if a governor can be jailed on what many call groundless accusations, what chances do others have? Ahok lost his re-election bid for the city's top job last month to a Muslim rival. Analysts say radical Islamic groups had a decisive impact on the outcome. Here in Hong Kong, United Christian Hospital admitted to a medical blunder involving the now-famed liver transplant mother, Tang Kwai Si. Her daughter said the hospital had been covering this up. The hospital today revealed its doctors had failed to notice Tang was diagnosed with hepatitis when she went in for kidney disease treatment. As a result, specialists failed to give her preventative medication to deal with her hepatitis B, and that may have caused her liver to fail. The hospital apologized today for the mistake. Tang made headlines after her daughter, Michelle, was rejected as a liver donor to save her mother. The hospital should have notified us when the blunder was discovered and not hide this from us. We discovered this ourselves and asked them for further details and then we learned they are already investigating the matter. What if I say sorry to the hospital a hundred times and they give me back my healthy mother? That will be better. On day two of his Macau visit, state leader Zhang Dejiang praised a special administrative region for putting national security as its top priority. His comments came during a forum this morning. In his address, Zhang said Hong Kong and Macau get the chance to benefit from the mainland economy's growth, while many countries are queuing up to do the same. He hopes the cities will make the most out of the Belt and Road Initiative and the development of the Big Bay Area. Zhang praised Macau for implementing national security laws. President Xi Jinping has already said that Macau has set a good example in putting national security in its top priority by being the first to implement Article 23 of the Basic Law. This is Beijing's acknowledgement of the enclave's government and its people. The state leader also visited Macau's legislature, where he pressed lawmakers not to filibuster or engage in violence, a message some believe could be directed at Hong Kong. Filibustering and violence simply don't happen in our legislature. So maybe Zhang Dejiang is sending a message to another region. The Court of Final Appeal has begun hearing the appeal case involving former Chief Secretary Raphael Hoy, who was jailed for seven and a half years for accepting bribes and misconduct in office. His co-defendants, former Sanonkai staff member Thomas Chan and ex-stock exchange official Francis Kwan also showed up today. They were followed by former Sanokai Properties Joint Chairman Thomas Kwok, who was slapped with a five-year jail term but has been granted bail for the appeal. Hui and Kwok's lawyers argue that the ex-official did not give Sanokai special treatment even after taking money from the property developer. Chief Justice Jeffrey Ma disagreed. The hearing continues tomorrow. And coming up next, the latest from the world of business. And kicking things off with local stock market action, the benchmark Hang Seng added around 1.3% to close at 24,889 points. The market opened modestly higher, but surged in the afternoon session thanks to gains in the tech sector. News China plans to create a trio of energy giants through mergers of eight companies. Saw so China Resources Land get a big boost as shares in the company rallied around 5.5%. 
Well, a relentless rise in U.S. crude output and slowing global demand has kept pressure on crude oil markets. But Saudi Arabia's energy minister says the worst is over. Speaking at an oil and gas conference in Malaysia, Khalid Al-Fali added markets are rebalancing. But he still expects OPEC to extend output cuts till the end of 2017. Bloated global inventory saw black gold prices slip back below 50 U.S. dollars per barrel, pressuring OPEC to extend cuts for the rest of the year. Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda says he expects to meet the central bank's 2% inflation target around next fiscal year. That's if the BOJ continues with its current monetary easing. He added that it would adjust policy if needed, but that the central bank recently upgraded Japan's economic outlook and the global economy was growing stronger. And trouble between Toshiba Corp and its semiconductor business partner, Western Digital. The Japanese firm told Western Digital not to interfere in the sale of its prize chip unit. Western Digital says Toshiba is violating their contract by transferring their joint ventures rights. Toshiba has called out Western Digital for deliberately interfering in its potential economic advantage. Western Digital is also a bidder for the chip unit. Staying on the M&A beat, a media mogul Rupert Murdoch's attempt to take full control of the UK's pay TV group Sky may have hit another snag. British regulators are probing whether the Murdoch's, whether Murdoch's 21st Century Fox would make a fit and proper owner of the London-listed company. And as Sonia Legg reports, an American woman is trying to convince UK authorities that it is not. She'd come a long way, but Wendy Walsh is on a mission. The American used to be a regular guest on a Fox show hosted by Bill O'Reilly, a presenter she's accused of sexual harassment. She's hired a lawyer to try and persuade the British regulator Ofcom to prevent Rupert Murdoch's 21st century Fox taking full ownership of Sky. I came to the UK to make you aware of the epidemic of sexual harassment and retaliation and allegations of racism rampant inside the Murdoch media empire in the U.S. 21st Century Fox wants to buy the near 61% of Sky, which it doesn't already own, for $14.5 billion. As it's listed in London, the British government has asked Ofcom to assess whether a deal would be in the public interest. It's already been cleared by the European Commission, but it's politically sensitive in Britain. A previous attempt in 2011 was derailed by a phone hacking scandal at one of Murdoch's British newspapers. It revealed close ties between politicians, police and the media. Given everything that we know about the Murdoch empire, let alone revelations to come, we believe it would be irresponsible for this deal to go through. O'Reilly parted company with Fox last month. Newspaper reports claimed he and Fox paid five women a total of $13 million to settle harassment claims. New York lawyer Douglas Wigdor has said he'll also be meeting Ofcom this week. He represents 20 current and former Fox News employees who are suing the network for alleged racial and sexual bias. Turning to tech now, and Amazon is dominating the lion's share of the market for voice-controlled speakers with its device, Amazon Echo, according to research firm eMarketer. Fred Kalayama has the details. Alexa, take a video. Alexa is helping Echo grab an Amazonian share of the market. Amazon's interactive voice control personal assistant works with a smart speaker Amazon Echo and can turn on the house lights, play music, and order an Uber. It will claim over 70% of the market for voice controlled speakers this year, according to research firm eMarketer. Amazon does not disclose sales figures, but it has said it has trouble keeping Amazon Echo in stock. Analysts say device sales and extra revenue from shoppers who place orders via Alexa could generate $10 billion for Amazon by 2020. Amazon's biggest rival, Alphabet's Google Home, is trailing far behind with about 20% share. But there is room for growth. eMarketer says the number of active U.S. users of voice-controlled speakers will more than double this year to 35.6 million. And stay with us. There's plenty more to come on our show.